Hey everyone, I'm Jasmine, the product manager for Session Replay. I'm excited to share with you some of the new features we've added. You can pinpoint user frustration signals with rage and dead clicks and enable end users to report bugs on your app with our improved user feedback feature. Before we get into our new features, let me walk you through a quick overview. Session Replay is a video-like reproduction of a user session that lets you see exactly what happens when bugs occur. It is not a video recording, but rather it's powered by DOM snapshots. That means you can inspect the DOM or use our other powerful debugging tools, such as console logs and network requests. It's like having Chrome Dev tools for your production user sessions. Replays are also neatly embedded directly within an issue in Sentry, so you can debug your errors faster. We care about user privacy, and we know you do too. That's why we mask all text and images by default before it leaves your user's browser. On top of that, the same server-side PII scrubbing tools Sentry provides for error events also apply to replay events. Rest easier knowing that we've taken exhaustive steps to keep PII on your users' machines and not on ours. Session Replay is also super easy to install. You can get started with just a few lines of code. We give you a bunch of flexible ways to decide how and when sessions are recorded, including being able to record a session only when an error is experienced by the user. Now I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Michelle, for a demo of our Rage and Dead Click features. Hi everyone, I'm Michelle, a software engineer on the Replay team, and I help develop the Rage and Dead Click selector feature. Here's the Pokemart demo site we'll be showing today, built with Next.js. On the homepage, we have a whole bunch of Pokemon listed, and I can click into any Pokemon, see all the details, add it to my cart, and I can see that the cart updated as expected. Clicking into the cart allows me to check out as well. And this is a simple site that seems to have all the basic functionalities, but let's see how replays can help us make it better. To give a bit of context, we initially built the replay product to give developers a visual medium for debugging errors faster. But then we realized there's a whole class of problems not associated with errors, where replays can still help us out. And these include user frustration and user experience problems. So if we head over to the replay index, we can see these widgets at the very top of the page. These widgets show the top selectors on your pages that have been raged and dead clicked on. So to clarify some terminology, a selector is any DOM element on your page, like a button or a link, and you might not know what a dead click or a rage click is. So a dead click is basically when a user clicks on something on your site and nothing happens for seven seconds. And similarly, a rage click is when a user clicks on a dead element five or more times and nothing happens for seven seconds. So rage clicks are always a subset of dead clicks. And if a user is rage clicking somewhere on your site, that's a pretty good indication that something went wrong. So these widgets are a very useful addition to the replay index because not only do they show you the top selectors that have been rage and dead clicked on, but you can actually expand these panels to show example replays where the user clicked on this specific selector. So if I clicked into this replay, I'd be able to see a user dead clicking on my checkout button. These widgets show the top three selectors, but if you'd like to see all the selectors, you can click on the see all selectors button. And that will take you to a larger table with all the selectors that have been raged and dead clicked on. So the selector widget and the selector index are useful addition to the replay product because we're now grouping by a whole new type. We're grouping by elements that have been clicked on, and not just any clicks, but rage and dead clicks. And you're easily able to click into any of these selectors and see example replays where your users clicked on that selector. This feature allows you to easily see insightful and actionable replays right from your index. So to demonstrate that, let's check out the replay under this selector right here. This is my top most rage clicked selector. Now, I can't tell what this button text is because it's masked to protect privacy by default since Sentry is a privacy-first company. However, if you know this content is safe, then you can opt out of this setting. So let's click into the replay and see if that can help us figure out this dead click. And you can see that this button is actually highlighted for me here, which is exactly the element that was rage clicked on. So we can see in the breadcrumbs that the user rage clicked a whole bunch here, 
So let's watch the replay and see what happened. It looks like they were clicking on this big red button multiple times and nothing ever happened. So the recording shows me that there's absolutely no feedback or DOM changes each time the user clicks that button. I can totally understand why the user was frustrated in this situation and clicked multiple times hoping it would work. And actually, if I look closer and go to full screen mode, I can see that the Pokemon is out of stock, which the user didn't realize. So that's why they couldn't check out. But we shouldn't just leave our customers hanging with the dead click. We should fix it. To fix this dead click, I might add some sort of toast that pops up that says, unable to add to cart, this Pokemon is out of stock. Or even easier, disable this button entirely so the user will know it's not clickable. With replays, I easily found a frustrating user experience issue that my users were facing that I never knew about. I was able to easily click on my top selector find an example replay to watch, and figure out exactly what I need to do to solve this problem just from the replay. I can now go talk to a designer to figure out how to make this a better user experience. With the selector widgets and the selector index, you're able to discover so many more replays like this one, where the user is rage clicking and dead clicking on elements on your site. So that's it for me for rage and dead clicks, and I'll pass it back to Jasmine to finish up the rest of the demo. Continuing that story, I'd like to introduce a new tool that helps you identify and debug problems faster, user feedback. User feedback surfaces issues directly from your users that they can submit easily through a form we provide. I've just added the new feedback form to the Pokemart site and customized the form CSS to match the site. When a user submits a feedback, we send you an alert to your team via Slack or whatever integration you have set up. Let's check that out. Here you can see the new user feedback view. This user Ryan says, why is Pikachu so expensive? Isn't it supposed to be a discounted price? From this message alone, I'm not sure what they're talking about. Let's see what's up with the Pikachu page. I can clearly see that there is a $50 sale, so I'm a little confused. This looks perfectly fine on my machine. Usually I just dismiss this and go back to doing my work, but since there's a replay attached to this feedback, I will take a deeper look. I can now see that Ryan, our user, is based out of the UK, since their screen shows the pound's currency symbol. For them, the price has gone up 50x instead of there being a sale, which is pretty problematic and we should fix it. Without user feedback, I wouldn't have been able to act on this bug. Replay gave me all the information I needed to fix this bug quickly. No long email chains going back and forth the user collecting information or waiting on support. User feedback is valuable in numerous other scenarios. Users often encounter tricky software bugs in production that are hard to grasp without seeing them firsthand, whether it's dead links or broken permission flows or even wrong pricing, user feedback tied to replay provides all the context needed to quickly understand and resolve these tricky issues. Today, we covered two new additions to our session replay platform, user feedback and UX issues, rage and dead clicks. To learn more and try out these features today, be sure to check out our blog post and join us in Discord. We'll be there to answer any questions that you might have. I also highly recommend that you tune in to learn more about Century's new EU data residency support, premiering on the Century YouTube channel at 9 a.m. Pacific. Thank you all for watching. Bye for now.